Hey guys, so this is our first clutch that has pipped so far this season and it is from our Brooks King Snake. It is our Lavender Mosaic male to our Hypo female. So I'm excited to see these babies even though they should all be normals with three hats which would be Lavender, Hypo, and Mosaic. But we had one that came out of the egg so I really really want to find him somewhere in there but I don't know how I'm going to navigate all the other eggs so this is not an example of what to do, but for educational purposes and for the video, I'm gonna try to find the first baby because it's the first baby out of the egg of the season, so that's exciting. At least for me. Melissa doesn't look as excited. His belly's like pink, because obviously he needs to go through his initial shed cycle, so therefore, it looks a little funky. Oh, there he is though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this here, even though he looks almost exanthic or something, it is actually a normal Brooks King Snake. And I know that because I can see some of the yellows and reds that are going to come through once he has his first couple sheds. But a very, very calm animal. Which honestly, Brooks King Snakes, it can go either way. Especially with babies. They can be super defensive, therefore, I'm happy just to be holding him like this. Wow, corn babies are nothing like this. Yeah, how do you feel as far as like how big these come out in comparison oh, to corns? Oh, well, if it's all, they're all this calm, I'm totally okay with it. Oh, I don't think they'll all be this calm. I don't even know if this guy will be all that calm once uh, I've just tried to be as gentle as I can with him. If I wave my fingers in front of his face or something, I'm sure he wouldn't like that. But it's just cool. It's like they almost don't fit into their head until they get a little bit older. And it seems like he's just getting a little bit nervous because Melissa's filming and she was just in front of him. And now he kind of cued in on my voice. Not on my voice, but the breath coming out of my mouth. And uh, you can see, oh, see, you didn't like my little hand wave either. Mm -hmm. So we want to be mindful of him and not stress him out too much. Let's try to put him down in a way that he won't get mad at us here. Oh, look at that. He's gonna try to dig right in there as quick as possible. Keep on calling it a him, but we don't know. Oh, look, there's another one that's out. What? They're so much thicker. Yeah, this is like a... He coming out. Oh, look at how much smaller this one is. Whoa. Whoa. So film this now. How is that possible? We thought we were done filming, but we found another baby Florida king snake in the eggs here. Once I was moving the eggs around, I found this guy in the sphagnum moss with his head popping out. And look at how much smaller this animal is than the animal that I showcased before. Not only is this animal bigger in length, but look at how much girthier this one is than this one. And I don't know if that's because, you know, for whatever reason, didn't absorb as much yolk as the other one did, or the egg itself is just smaller. If you can see, <laughs> Dixie, if you can see, this big guy came out of this egg right here, and the small one actually came out of this egg, and this is a much smaller egg. I would say probably half the size, so that makes sense that maybe uh, our smaller animal is about probably like 20% smaller than, than the other one. So unlike our corn snakes, which we separate after their first shed, with the king snakes, of course, king snakes eat other snakes, therefore we're gonna separate them before their first shed and set them up in a nice, moist enclosure and make sure that they have a good first shed. And quite frankly, it's not a very high likelihood that they would eat each other straight out of the egg because they just absorbed all of their yolk sacs, so therefore, you know, they've had some good meals in them, basically, and they shouldn't come out very, very hungry, but we will uh, separate them just to make sure that that doesn't happen. It has been about seven days since our king snakes have come out of their eggs. Therefore, a lot of them, if not all of them, have had their first sheds. So it's time to put them into their more permanent setup. In this video, you may hear me interchange Brook king snake and Florida king snake. Technically, Florida king snake is more correct. Brooks was previously thought to be a subspecies of the Florida king snake that was found mostly uh, in South Dade County over near Miami, Southern Florida. But 
since there's been genetic research done and it's been debunked and quite frankly they're all the same species, Florida king snakes. So you may hear me interchange it, but Florida is more correct. So here we have our first baby and as you can see this is a little sphagnum moss from when we had them in the egg box. And they went to the bathroom, a lot of them you're going to see they went to the bathroom as well as this is his or her first shed. So what we're going to do is clean these out and let me just pick up this guy right here. And as you notice he's mostly black and cream right now but as he gets older he will get more red and more yellow. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sex this animal right now. If you are not experienced doing this, don't do it. Do it with someone else first because it's good to know how much pressure to apply. And on these babies, you don't have to apply much. They're pretty easy to sex. So this does appear to be a female. So just to be 100% sure, I will be sexing them again probably after they take their few meals when I take pictures to put them up on the website or put them up on Instagram and then again before I ship them out just to make 100% sure what sex they are and everyone's getting the right sex to the best of my ability. Now I am going to just clean this out real quick. Primarily our bedding at least for this season at the time being is going to be Aspen. Sometimes we do cocoa chip. It depends what is readily available at the time. It doesn't matter much as long as it's not pine or something that's going to be an irritant to the snake. I am going to do a good handful of it. Quite frankly, the more substrate, the more places a smaller snake like this is going to have to hide. I'm going to put a hide in there also, but if you put enough substrate in there, that will give them a lot of layers to, you know, go underneath. And quite frankly, I see them hiding underneath the substrate more so than I even see them under their hide. Therefore, I find substrate to be super important as far as the babies go, as well as even adults. So very, very simple. You're seeing her just go right under there right away. This is her water bowl. Her water bowl is just a little condiment cup from a restaurant wholesaler. And the hide here is going to be we have some toilet paper rolls as well as paper towel rolls if you're a snake breeder or like everyone else, everyone poops. So therefore, we have toilet paper rolls and uh, as a snake breeder, you go through a lot of paper towels. Therefore, you're going to have paper towel rolls as well. I'm just going to cut it in half, make a little half shelter, put it in there as a hide. That gives us something that is basically upcycled in a sense as well as I don't feel bad once they go to the bathroom on it we can just discard it. And so that's pretty simple setup, but it will be perfect for a baby like that. Now, what we have to do is a little bit of record keeping. And what we do to keep track is we have an index card and I'll show you exactly what we put on it. Okay. So first we're gonna put on their ID number. And so since the parents were a hypo and a lavender mosaic, female goes first. So that's gonna be H for hypo. L for lavender, M for mosaic, and this is going to be our first baby. So there it is, HLM01. And then over here we're going to put the sex. And this here is female. Usually we would have pink and blue pens, but we're kind of slacking on the pens, or on the markers rather. And then down here we're actually going to record when they feed. So it will be a check mark when they feed and it will be an X mark if they skip a meal. What I'm looking for in babies is three consecutive feeds. If off the bat they get three consecutive feeds, then I can say they're pretty much ready to go. I'll put them on the website and then they'll probably get one or two more feeds after that. In the other case that they don't take it right away, we want three consecutive. So therefore, if it eats the first feeding, it skips one, eats again, skips one, eats again, no good. I want them to be three in a row. We have to put the genetics. So this is going to be a het, hypo, lavender, mosaic. And that's really it. So here we have our next king snake. 
Look at those hemipenes. So if you guys don't know, snakes have two penises. <laughs> and therefore, there's both of them right there. And so this is a definite male. And I just wanted to show you the difference between a male and a female. Obviously on that female, we didn't get anything coming out there. And here we have two pretty obvious hemipenes. So this guy right here is a little male. We did catch him mid-shed here. So we're going to aid him in shedding. All I'm doing is holding onto the shed while he inches his body out of it. As you can see, it's coming out pretty easily. And I think this will definitely help him out as far as feeling a little bit more comfortable. And of course we don't want him to have stuck shed. Therefore, he'll look better too. He'll feel better and look better. So let's let him just go through our hands. By the time he goes through, it will be all gone. And look at how much nicer he looks now. I know, calm down. Okay, now he's getting restless. If you don't support this snake, they will freak out a little bit. You don't want to put your hands in front of their face. That's how they freak out, so there you go. The shed's completely off. So Brooks King Snakes are very docile, at least this clutch has been by nature. But if you do mishandle them, if you do kind of find reasons to give them extra stress as far as putting your hands too far in front of their face or being a little bit, uh, you know, making too many sudden movements, they will get a little bit defensive. But as you can see, if you're calm, they're typically calm. So there it is, our setup for our baby Florida king snakes. So it is something that you can emulate if you're hatching out Florida king snakes yourself, or if you're buying a king snake from us, you could probably keep them in a pencil case like this for at least a few months until they get a little size on them. And quite frankly, king snakes, corn snakes, all the smaller colubrids are escape artists. So the biggest thing is making sure that they are secure. They will find their way out of everything. That's why it's hard for me to recommend something like a 10 gallon tank for a baby this small because somehow they always seem to find a way out of it. So that's why I always prefer to start in tubs and then we can move it on from there. I want them to get as big of an enclosure as possible, but I also want them to be secure because quite frankly, you know, the biggest thing is if the health of the animal. If there's, if you if there's lose, a will, there's a way, they yeah. will find their way out. And us, we as breeders just want you guys to have your snake for as long as possible and we don't want to make any recommendations that could be harmful for the snake. It's really simple. All you need is a small condiment cup for a water bowl, a small toilet paper roll for a hide, and a large handful of some aspen bedding. And then as you can see in this enclosure, we also have this little souffle dish that works perfectly as well if you want to get something heavier that they won't knock over. This is actually probably even more preferred. So these guys will be eating frozen thawed pinkies. We will offer them a meal probably within this week since they had their first shed. And if you are buying a king snake or a corn snake from us, it is always on frozen thawed pinkies unless we say otherwise because I feel that frozen thawed is the best way to feed your animal. It's the safest way as well as it's the easiest on the keeper. All you do is keep a bunch of frozen thawed rodents in your freezer, which your significant other or parent may not like but it's a lot better than dealing with live rodents. So anything you get from us will be on frozen thawed. Other than that, that's pretty much it. You know, 85 degree hot spot, humidity is not a big deal, but you probably want to keep it above 40. Super, super easy animals to keep, super docile animals, and they will make great pets. They get pretty large, you know, probably about four to five feet, but nothing that isn't handleable for, uh, you know, for an avid keeper. So there it is. This is our Florida King Snakes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you made it this far, you're on the team.